Hey everybody, welcome to The Waldock Way, I'm Jessica. And I get asked all the time, what are my favorite resources for this? Or what are my favorite resources for that? So I thought it would be super fun if I did a series where I brought to you my top 10 favorite resources for a specific subject. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm gonna be picking 10 non-curriculum related resources to share with you guys that are my favorites. Make sure you subscribe because you're not gonna to wanna to miss out. Today's favorite resources are going to be math. This one was probably one of the hardest because we have had a lot of really great math resources. I'm gonna do my best to narrow it down. My top favorite that is not curriculum is bedtime math. And the reason that is, is because they're really great with word problems, but they also have the longest life that anything has because it has questions for what they call wee ones, little kids, and big kids. The next thing that I have is basically any book by Greg Tang. These happen to be the two that I grabbed off the shelf. This one is Math for All Seasons, and it is kind of like a riddle book. So it gives you a riddle, and it's basically you have to quickly count these, which is normally by doing some sort of special math to do it instead of just you know physically counting. And then in the back of the book, it even shows you their suggestions um, you know, for how you should have done the math or how they suggest to do the math to make it the quickest. And this one is called Masterpieces. So it's, and it kind of combines art and math. So you have a famous art piece, tells you a tiny bit about it. It has like a little poem and it says, can you group the stars in heaven, find four to make seven. So you have to take the the painting and some pieces of it and you're doing kind of like a math riddle. We love anything by Greg Tang. His books are so much fun. If you happen to watch my language arts favorites, you saw a language arts. Um, it was actually all in one that was very similar to this. I believe it was called Word Fun. This is the equivalent. It's math fun. The only difference is these were all individual books when I bought them. So it's a set and it's things like if you were a circle, if you were a triangle, if you were a polygon, a quadrilateral, if you were a plus sign, a minus sign, an even number, an odd number, if you were a minute, if you were an inch or a centimeter, if you were a time sign, if you were a divided by sign, if you were a fraction, and if you were a set. And again, these are just kind of fun picture books that focus heavily on whatever they're speaking about at that time. So these are really, really fun to add to math as well. We also really enjoy the circumference book series. They're all based on math. We don't have all of them because they get a little bit above Emily's head, but the first three to four are really, really great. And if you really wanted to make a curriculum with these, there are a few out there that are already made using these books. So you could do that if your child was really, really into them. These are my personal favorite, and I will tell you, it is next to impossible to find them new. I actually scored most of the ones that we own on thrift books. Um, I've bought them all used. I haven't paid more than $5 for one, so make sure you just kind of stay looking for it. But these are Real World Math by Wendy Clemson, and there's tons of different topics. We have a Zookeeper one that we're working through currently. There's Ocean Giants, Jungle, Race to the Moon. Um, I believe there's also a dinosaur and a firefighter. We only have the blue level. I will start looking for the orange level soon. And there's also a purple level. What I love about them is that everything is based on real world math. So in this one, you are literally trying to journey to the moon and all of the math that you're doing is based around you needing to know it to be able to get to the moon. And it's about 40 pages. It has a ton of math involved. The answers are on the back in case you need to know, like in case you as the parent don't know them. Um, I, I just really, really like these. I like that it equates math to real world, to things that would really need to be done. And Emily enjoys that too, because sometimes let's be honest, we kind of want to be like, am I ever really going to use this? And these answer that question. We also love and adore the Usborne Lift the Flat books, and they have adding and subtracting, um, at telling time, measurement, times tables, multiplication and division, fractions and decimals, pretty much any math concept they have one on. I love that it's interactive, so you're reading as you're you know, physically doing a movement, so it really helps kind of submit those things in. 
And I also love that it kind of steps up as it goes. It gives you, you know, different things like using a number line. So it gives you different techniques, like ways to work, you know, with bigger numbers, money. And it just, like I said, it's really, really fun. The times table one is actually my favorite. Um, and most of them have a game in the back as well, which you guys know we love games. So we haven't done this one yet. We haven't finished this book. But you punch this out, and this becomes your spinner, and then you're playing the game. So we really, really love the Usborne Lift the Flat books. And then another thing that we love, in case you didn't know, is that Usborne has an activity book that matches all of the Math Lift the Flat books. So we really, really enjoy pairing them. So this is the Usborne Addition and Subtraction. I have all of them to match the Lift the Flat books. But it is just fun, again, interactive way to do math. It's a workbook, so you could read the book and do this little workbook. These cut out for like little um, time stickers and you or test and you would give them a sticker and a score. And there's also stickers in the back for the student as well. So it's not all just boring writing. The answers are in the back too. But it's always something different. So I really enjoy having something different to offer for the different math concepts. I have also really enjoyed the thinking mats from Carson DeLosa. There are 15 mats in each box. I love how simple they are. They work really, really well for strewing or if I just need to give her some sort of math, something that doesn't take a whole lot of prep work for me. This one happens to be from the third grade box and they come in these little like folded file folders inside here. So it tells you what you're gonna need, the directions, and then inside, these would be already, um, you would already fold or rip these apart. They're all perforated, so it's really easy. But then it shows you what you're doing. This would need two players because it's for player one and two. And then you also have this little booklet for the teacher. And normally, they have, for instance, find the facts. You would list, you know, you would make a copy of this and give it to your students. Or you can just not use this at all. If you're the one playing with your child, you wouldn't need it. But it is there as an option for each one of the thinking mats in there has a recording sheet for the students or your child. So I really, really like having these on hand. They're really easy. They're simple. Um, and it's something hands-on without it being a ton of prep work for me, which sometimes, let's be honest, I need that. One of my absolute favorite, favorite math resources is dice. And there are a ton of dice out there. This is just a few that was in my math bin. We have like addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, 10 sided, 12 sided. These are time dice. So it just makes math more fun. Sometimes I'll have her just, um, you know, roll these with the addition or subtraction and do the math. Sometimes I have her roll these and then take one of our clocks and have her set the time on the clock. It just depends on the mood I'm in, but I love having dice on hand. You can get one of those giant things on Amazon that's just like a giant tub of dice, and it has all kinds of different dice in there. There's place value dice and fraction dice, and you just can't go roll wrong with dice when it comes to math. And then obviously as my very last mathing, we have manipulatives because you really can't do math without them. So we have some of our favorite manipulatives shown here, the standard unifix cubes, pattern blocks, Poisonar rods. These fraction tiles are really, really cool because it allows you to kind of see, for instance, that two fourths is the same as one half and not just because I say that, but because you can see it, which is really key for my daughter. The geo boards are really, really awesome for shapes, for fractions. Um, I, we love these. I have a bunch of these small ones and I have some larger ones. For place value, some of our favorite things are obviously the um, place value blocks. We really like these place value discs from learning resources. We will even pull some of these out like a handful. And let's say we have four ones. I will have her flip um, the ones on this place value flip chart and basically make the number based off of the handful that she pulled out of here. So if there's four ones and two thousands or whatever, this hundreds board has been one of our favorite. It comes with like the little wooden Scrabble numbers and then this piece lifts out so you can have them match the numbers at first and then you have just the blank board under it if you wanted them to do it without it. And then this is one of those things that would last a lifetime because it comes with all of the different numbers and um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and equal symbols, as well as all of these manipulative sticks for you to use to be able to show the math. 
And last but not least would be our math games, which are probably our most used resource. 